live stream. Today, I am going to answer some questions. So I'm going to jump on to it quite uh, immediately. Uh, but I'm going to be touching three things today. First, I'm going to answer some of the questions with which I accumulated uh, over the past few weeks or maybe two months. So there are a lot of people uh, showing some interest in moving to Sweden. So I don't want to present this information as though I'm an authority. I am no authority person. So I'm just going to share with you the experience that I have after staying here for 23 years. So I'm going to be answering questions and then I'm going to be answering your questions. So I hope that you can write down your questions so that, you know, I would open up the session later on, on the set middle part for you guys to ask me any questions. Even if you didn't watch this live, you could still ask me questions uh, even, you know, after that. And also, I'm going to be sharing with you uh, what happened to me lately and what is my future plan. Sounds good, right? So I'm going to jump on by answering one of the most uh, popular questions, which is how do I move to Sweden? Okay, so I got this uh, question by a few of you guys, Leslie Hank, uh, and then I have a Simon Simon Lowe who have asked me this question. Leslie Hing is 70 years old and she's from Singapore and she wants to know how she could move to Sweden to retire. So Leslie, uh, thank you for your interest uh, and asking me this question and I think I would like to give you some advice before you move to Sweden. Uh, you asked me which part of Sweden. Before we even go into which part of Sweden, let me tell you the eligibility. Uh, in Sweden, it's, it's either you are married or if you have a business here, right? So these are the four factors that people move to Sweden. Not so much of a retired though. It's, uh, people can buy, anybody can buy a summer house here. But then there is a restriction on the number of days that you can stay. If I'm not wrong, it is 90 days or somebody told me 180 days, I don't know. Which means to say you are allowed to stay during this period. And after that, if you want to prolong your stay, you have to seek another kind of visa. Uh, and if I'm not wrong, you have to go to the custom, the immigration uh, board, to stamp your passport so you could extend your stay and you also have to have a reason uh, if you do not come here for these four reasons there are also another kind of visa i do not know what, what is it called it's called sh something like a chagrin and a salem visa I, i'm not so good in pronunciation but anyway this is a visa you can get you can apply through your local consulate where you could seek them uh, for advice and they will probably ask you uh, what kind of a reason, you know, that is very important. And the one thing about staying in Sweden, the government, because you don't have a, a job in earlier uh, part of your life here, so you didn't pay tax. So uh, there is no benefits at all. So if you want to stay here at 70, you, first of all, you have to be quite rich because the houses here are quite expensive especially the summer house and also you must be able to adapt to the weather uh, and then the thing is that you know because you are not eligible they will not grant you the uh, permanent resident unless you have stayed here five years continuously over these five years and then they offer you maybe a permanent resident so you have to check it out. I'm going to include some of the links to the authority so you can check them out. And these are the reliable links that you can re uh, rely on. Okay, so if you have fixed the, the idea that you want to get a house here, I think from my experience, my this channel is all about stress-free lifestyle, right? 
So you guys probably thought, oh, I want to have that kind of lifestyle. It's like my dream. Uh, there are things that you need to consider before you buy a house. A lot of people, they say, oh, maybe they found out there are sites that you can check out. I'm going to give you two links uh, in the video description where you could find out uh, the kind of house that is very affordable. For my case, I find it's not so expensive. As as for the summer house, if you are staying in the countryside, so the houses there are very cheap. But the thing is that all these houses, uh, some of them are like abandoned house. I think it's a very big risk that you buy that kind of house. I've seen some YouTubers, they go and buy houses. Uh, and then it's like an old, not crappy, but you know, some kind of semi-abandoned house that nobody lived there for many years. So there is a lot of things you have to think because the pipeline already may be frozen or may be damaged. That's why nobody is staying there. And also there is a lot of concern. The insulation you know if you come from a, a place like in singapore or asia you are used to the kind of tropical country and then winter can be a really harsh time for you guys to stay because i'm sharing this with my experience it took me about five six years to get used to the winter here so you really have to consider a good house with very good insulation and when you have a good insulation insulated house uh, chances is that you know you need to pay more on the bill during the winter so houses wise I would say that you know you really have to be careful there are people who wants to sell their house so immediately because they will take whatever condition that you give them but that is where the tricky part is when they want to sell the house so easily to you without even any you know open it up to the market something is risky. I'm not saying as rich people are, are dishonest, but I'm just saying you have, it's your own responsibility to check with the agent to find out if the house has problem and what are the problem. And usually by law in Sweden, if you want to buy a house, the property agent knows everything. They will, so they will tell you on the website what is wrong with the house. So if you still want to buy the house, it is your responsibility. All right, so uh, if you ask me where, uh, for me, if you want a peaceful life, the best place is like a, in the countryside. North Sweden is a definitely a better choice because North Sweden, we have longer daylight, you know, like in South of Sweden, you have a lot of uh, rain and it's very windy. But here is like lesser windy and more sunshine, more daylight during the summer. So I would suggest maybe considering North Sweden. And you can find out on a lot of YouTubers, they move up to Sweden, not in the south, but usually on the north. It is because the north offer, you know, a real winter, real summer, houses is cheaper, people there are maybe more uh, isolated, so you don't have houses too close to each other. Uh, yeah, and, and that is what I would suggest. But, um, you know, it, I have friends who bought a summer house and uh, they are from Singapore and they only come here for like three months. So after the three months, they go to the another city, which is about 150 kilometers from here, Umeå, and they go there and stamp their passport and then they could continue to stay for another three months. So in terms of food wise, I would say that Swedish food is really, really depending on yourself. Some people, they are used to eating like, you know, da yu da ro, we call it. Uh, um, we have this, um, let me just see if I have this comment thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we have this uh, uh, habits of, uh, if you notice a supermarket in Sweden, the food that they sell, Compared to Singapore, I would say that certain food are actually quite cheaper compared to Singapore. Like uh, vegetable is expensive because, you know, we have long winter and we import. So Asia is much cheaper. So it's really depending on the kind of food that you are eating. And for me as an Asian, uh, it is much expensive because all the things that I want to buy uh, to cook Asian food, they are all imported. 
So eventually they are more expensive, right? Makes sense, right? I think if you want to live in a stress-free country, you have to prioritize what actually, why do you want to move here? All right. And you know, Swedish people, they are very preserved. They are very shy. To mix friends with them is very difficult. All right. Let me tell you, even after saying 23 years here, I still find it so difficult. Unless you are like a self loner, you want to be by yourself uh, and you don't want people to disturb you, then this is a perfect country where you could buy a, a house in the countryside and then maybe some land where you could forage food or maybe plant your own vegetables. So that can be a really light, uh, relaxing and uh, uh, what do you call that? A slow living kind of lifestyle. So if you are old, you know, just imagine you're going to have plant man, right? You're going to plant vegetable man, you know, it's very, it's not that easy, you know. It's not guaranteed that, you know, the kind of land that you buy, they are fertile. You have to be an expert to know whether this land are fertile for planting. And you need to have knowledge on that also. So it's not so easy, yeah. And also... Transportation, um, transportation wise, I having a ve vehicles is a must. If you come here as a tourist, you are eligible to drive for one year, depending on where you are coming from. Because I think, uh, like for me, I'm a ha I have a Singapore driving license. I am able to drive here for one year, but I find it's very tricky because. I am not used to driving in snow, you know. So they still grant me the license. And honestly, I dare not drive because you never know, you know, how's the condition like in the snow. Because uh, the condition of the road during the summer and the winter is totally different. But if you are just coming here during the summer, then it's not so bad. Then it's okay. You still can drive. And very relaxing, you will notice. It's not like in Singapore. The traffic right go crazy so it's uh, very relaxing and um, you have GPS and it's very easy to get so transport wise I I would think that taking bus um, unless depending on where you stay if you're staying like a suburban taking bus is not a problem but if you're staying in a countryside you must have a car let me tell you their buses is like come once in a one hour you know you have to get used to it so i do not know because singapore we are so spoiled with the uh, transport uh, like come every two minutes the mrt and then the buses like every five ten minutes right so here's like one hour and if you're going for big shopping you have a lot of grocery ayo yo yo you know it's gonna be a very very troublesome so having a car here is not expensive compared to Singapore we have the most expensive vehicles the whole world here is very cheap if you have owned a car in Singapore you there's no problem for you to own any car here very cheap the insurance is cheap the road tax is cheap you know and then we don't pay like a ownership tax right so having a car is more convenient easy to go about and then you know if you are leaving the country you you can have a car store in a warehouse where you can rent i don't know about uh, here in shalafil but we rent we rent uh, like a storage place where we put our caravan. So some of you guys would think, oh, then, you know, nine months, if you're going to stay there like three months, then what happened? Nine months, right? So unfortunately, this law is like that. So if you want to have resident, find a Swedish partner and marry him or her. And that's the only way to get Otherwise, you can get a sponsor, like Swedish people, to sponsor you so that you could stay here longer period. So I'm going to include that link so you can check it out. Uh, and also, the the things that uh, I have uh, another girl, Janice Chen, she wants to know how to find a job. 
Okay, Janice. Uh, and do, can I find a job without learning the language? Actually, if you have English as a uh, first language, uh, learning Swedish is actually not that difficult. You have to practice, uh, you know. Uh, she visited the North Sweden uh, and she dropped by. She asked me if she, she could drop by and I said, yeah, of course, you know, I'll be happy. I thought she was a Singaporean. She ended up being a, a Taiwanese. So it was really, really fun meeting her. She even made this, you know, this cookie, this uh, cake, you know, they call that Madalena cake for me. So I was so touched, you know, really, I was so touched. Thank you, Jess. Uh, really enjoy it. You know, I'm very stingy. I told LG, you can only eat one per day. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he's like, hmm, looking at me. Sometimes he go to the fridge. Huh? I say, uh, 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 uh. Oh. So, thank you so much. And I'm so glad that you have time to drop by. Ah, good idea. Looking for sponsor. Yeah, <laughs> looking for sponsor. It is not easy because the sponsor has to be responsible too, right? So if the, if anything happened to you, the sponsor has to be, you know, responsible for your insurance. So what the Swedish government will do is that if you want to stay here for long term, they will check your background. They will want to know that you have enough money to survive, right? and also a long period, let's say six months to a year. And then they want to make sure you have health insurance too, because if anything happened to you, you know your health insurance can take care of that. Because you don't have tax, right? You didn't pay tax, so you don't have the hospital benefits or the health benefits. So if you are six, 70, 60 you know, years old, so that is where your health is deteriorating. So you have to think about that, yeah, before you um, migrate here or before you move here. Uh, the easiest way for me is that, you know, to to find a, a, not a sponsor, like a partner, you know. Because in Sweden, we have this, we call, a, a mar it's not a marriage, yeah. You stay with somebody, all right, and that somebody is your sambo, we call that. And sambu is equivalent to having a marriage, uh, like the status is like almost married. Because if anything happened to your relationship, from what I understand is that during these three years, you're not supposed to be separated. And then once you stay here for three years, your sambu, which is your partner, can apply for you as a permanent resident pre uh, uh, before five years. So during this time, you can, you know, be like a resident there. So I'm going to include the link so you could check it out. Uh, how to find a job, right? So I think if you're a young couple or you are a young person, uh, finding a job here uh, can be really, really tough if you are middle. I mean, if you don't have a specialized uh, career or a job. So... Usually, uh, people who find a job here, if they cannot speak Swedish, you have to seek a company that do international uh, business. So, most of Swedish people, they can speak English and they are good in that. They're just too shy to speak English. So, usually, there shouldn't be a problem. If you, have, you, have, you are a specialist on certain kind of career, uh, like for uh, us, for example, we have these battery factories, right? There are about 3,000 employees. I don't know how many employees they're going to hire at the end of these five, six years. So we have a problem here in Shelleffield because all the people who come here to work in this factory, they are the international people. They are people from Indonesia, from Malaysia, I think from Thailand and from you know, all over the world, USA, Europe, you know, that's why um, the government now has to worry a little bit because uh, they didn't learn how to integrate yet because I find that this is the area that they should work on. And the workplace is an English-speaking environment. 
everybody there has to learn how to speak English. We have guests from Korea, uh, but they don't. Some of them don't speak English. But there is no problem because their leader is always the one who can speak English and they guide them to work. You know, just work, work, work. And they speak to each other in Korea. And then, you know, when they speak, when they report their job, they report to the Swedish uh, uh, employees. And there is no problem. We have a big battery factory here, which is the world's largest battery factories. So if you like, I'm going to include that link too, so you can apply job from there. It's easier to get a permanent resident if you have a work permit and you the company employ you, you know, and then you work there like for five years, then they will offer you the permanent resident. So that is one way. Eh? <laughs> and also, if you plan to study later, you know, they also can su support you on that. Leslie, Leslie Wong, Fiona, Lisa, and SH Sylvia. Why do you say in Sweden, not Singapore? <laughs> I get asked all the time. Of course, you guys know the reason why I stay here is because I have, um, I like my life here. It's less stress. Um, I don't have to, I have the opportunity to do what I like. And I have the benefits the government uh, offers me in terms of health, in terms of education, uh, retirement, you know. I, I feel like I've been taken care of. So I don't have to say in like Chinese, you say, uh, so ting, ko ting. It means uh, if, you, if your hands stop to work, your mouth stop, you know, you have nothing to eat. Which is really true, but here, no matter how your situation is, there are that you still can get help. So it is really uh, a nice country to stay, but uh, the harsh winter, and you're gonna miss your family. Maybe they're gonna hate you, <laughs> like my family do, uh, and you know you're gonna lose your friend, and then you know there's a lot of things that you're gonna lose eventually and you will think further and further away oh yeah you know um maybe singapore is not a place and people keep asking me will you go back to singapore in the future i say uh, no for sure because uh, i know what kind of life i want so really ask yourself what do you really want you know and uh, and, and if you know what you want your vision is there Maybe, you know, find a way to just apply for study uh, at the university if you are able to afford it. And then stay here for a few years, like two, three years, just to have a feel of it. So that is my advice. And if you are retired, maybe you can, don't have to buy a house because when you buy a house, it's a big investment. Uh, especially if you buy summer house, buy a small apartment. Uh, in Sweden, we call uh, there's two different type of apartment. One kind of apartment got value, and the other part is no value. The one no value is that you pay like a rent. It's like you know to a uh, association, and the other one is with value. So you buy that apartment, and you still continue to pay the rent. The rent is very low. But then, you know, you have the opportunity to earn money because normally this kind of apartment uh, is an investment. So like for me, I buy one really cheap one, I think 10, 11 years ago, and I could sell it 10 times more the price. So if you think like that, you know, it's uh, lesser risk, not so much money because uh, depending on where you buy, if you want to buy an apartment here in Sri Lanka, it's Forget it, okay? Forget it. There's no way you can get cheap apartment here because of our this battery factory. Uh, a lot of people don't have place to stay. So they are actually uh, staying with their parent. You know, if they are separated, divorced, they stay with their parent because they put their themselves up there to search for apartment. Nobody answer their advertisement. So I've seen that every day at Facebook and I know how serious it is. So apartment houses here, accommodation here is out of the way. No way you could buy cheap property. Um, 
why is three why is sweden a stress-free country to live yeah you look at this i think i have included that in my video uh the way we live our life maybe i should do a uh my plan huh, is uh, for my future video is to give you guys my eyes all right i'm going to do like uh, something not many people do like i'm going to let you experience sweden why and if you do feel the stress what can you do about that so i think my channel i'm trying to focus a lot on this idea stress and also how do i overcome uh, a lot of difficulties you know how to uh, have this really slow life hige lifestyle so that is my plan and also uh if you have any question now i'm going to be opening this uh forum now so i'm going to be just chit chatting on the way so if you have any question here's your chance all right ah good idea okay so um I want to announce something also. I, I do not know whether you have seen my video recently. I have actually do like a timeline. If you see this video, right, when you click onto YouTube video, you see this line, then there's a break, 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 break. If you click onto that, you will see that it's a lot of breaking uh, parts, like certain part of topics that I, I talk about. So I know you guys are really busy. You don't want to waste like 10, 15, 20 minutes to watch the whole video. So what you can do is you click onto that line and then you will see, oh, okay, the next thing she's going to talk is like, you know, the topic that you might be very interested. So you can skip the front part. Smart, right? So I try, I'm trying to do as much video uh, with that uh, feature so that you guys can skip, you know, certain part. Uh, and on also, I like to do like gratitude video. I don't know whether you guys uh, understand um, what my idea is. I think we must give gratitude to our life. Um, especially during this difficult time, everybody is like isolated. You know, once you're isolated for so long, and now maybe certain country are you know releasing but still you have this mental um, like uh, difficulties like you you lose the skill of socializing and because you are trapped in your house for so long then you find that your house is actually very safe huh? and then you know having trapped in a house so i noticed that during these two years coming to three years you know being trapped at home and that is not really good for our mental health so i'm going to come up with a few ideas like this gratitude vlogs where i'm going to tell you guys it's going to be like a short video where i'm going to share with you what i'm thankful for every day i'm going to be sharing just three or maybe five things that i'm feeling thankful for and then i'm going to Maybe that will inspire you. Maybe that will make you think that, oh yeah, really? How can I never thought about that? Huh? I should be feeling thankful. Because when you feel thankful uh, of your day, I know not every day is a good day. Some day can be shitty day. So you put yourself through that day. And then you still can find something that you can be grateful about during this day day and uh, i give gratitude every morning i wake up and then before i close my eyes and sleep i always like you know not pray i'm not praying i'm not a christian but i like to like give thanks to people uh to myself first of all it's to myself and um, that really is a mind changing you know it's like boom if once you start to do that you will be amazed what kind of changes you're going to be facing you will definitely feel more positive and also you are more happy you are more relaxed and you are more you know happy and i think that is very important 
so that is what I'm planning to do. So I want to um, take it easy this few weeks and just uh, work out on what kind of video I will be producing. And I'm going to schedule them and I'm going to film them. Uh, I'm going to film film them. I don't know saying this. Filming. Filming, right? So, <laughs> how many of you guys have this issue too? Filming. Filming. Because I am speaking Swedish. In Swedish, it's called film. Uh, and in English, it's... So, I'm going to be doing that. Um, and also... Uh, on the way, if you have any questions like uh, do I have any ideas where uh, to find site, uh, if I'm really interested in this situation of me uh, reaching my goal to move to Sweden, let me know in the comment, alright? I'll try my very best to give you the best link I can find uh, so you could, of course in English, uh, and then, you know, we can go, we can work from there. Don't ask me for sponsorship, okay, because I can't do that. Uh, and also, uh, think about it, because you really want to think very hard before you move to another country. Uh, so guys, cheers. Happy Sunday. How come my, my, my glasses? I'm drinking lemon water. How come it's so cloudy? It's not hot, you know, it's actually quite cold. So. Maybe you guys probably wonder why I drink lemon water. And for you guys, I only drink lemon water. I stop drinking coffee. I drink only green tea and maybe those herbal tea that I pick myself. I don't even trust those tea that you sell in the the shop, you know, unless they are organic. So I drink lemon juice uh, with the white thing, everything. Uh, it is because of uh, it helped me to feel more relaxed. And I can feel it, you know, really um, quite obviously when I drink that. I've been drinking that for like... Uh, a month two months now and I see there's a lot of improvement the improvement that I see is on my tummy I don't know whether you guys can see it I'm going to just stand further a bit so you can see a little bit I used to be like pregnant you know nine months pregnant <laughs> now at least uh, uh, not so big and that's my worry because woman uh, so guys, I hope you guys, I am live. I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you really uh, do, uh, help this channel by giving a thumbs up. Send me a comment if you need any link. I'm going to include the links that I promised you. So I'll see you in my next uh, vlog, which is on Wednesday. Uh, I'm planning to do Wednesday my vlog and then on Sunday like today I supposed to put up a video but I don't I do live stream instead so I hope I can have more chance to do like a short live stream like that uh, I don't want to talk like a whole hour nobody got time right so I'm gonna try and make it as short as possible maybe I might sound a bit stressless so please forgive me uh, and also uh, I'm gonna try and do some really short uh, sh short short video in the vertical form uh, in TikTok so if you haven't checked out my TikTok go and do that uh, I'm gonna see if I could uh, get more viewers from there and uh, just for fun sake you know I did one video yesterday I was singing this uh, Celine Dion song <laughs> with another tiktoker so it was really fun that's what i do when i'm feeling like oh i'm so bored right so i want to do something uh, that kill time and also lg is not at home these few weeks uh these few days friday saturday sunday so he's been working so i've been alone all the time uh but he's coming home soon so i'm really looking forward to that and my daughter is coming later to join me for dinner uh i 
we'll see if I can do some for videography and I'll share them with you in my next Wednesday vlog. So thanks for watching. See you in my next. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.